here's a quick visual here before we put this thing in for good. I didn't get, I had just gotten the, the flex plate on here. This Chevy flex plate looks pretty huge on this little TDI. But anyway, we got our motor mounts all bolted in place there. Um, turbo is back on. And everything looks to be pretty good there. Same thing with this guy. I don't have the AC compressor on now, but we did go ahead and weld this extra brace in there on top of the other one in the back just to make sure we don't have any issues because of how long that one is. And so, anyway, got that buttoned up. Um, had to work on our oil cooler lines because I cut that black pipe coming out the back and so we just put the one side right onto there and I'm actually working on it's going to be a little bit of a messy contraption but it is an inline uh, block heater basically since these Volkswagens don't have any freeze plugs and anyway this is going to go right here right here on the back side and then it will curve around and plug in and it's going to lay on top of the engine there quite a bit of fittings to get it all adapted from inch and a quarter down to five eighths but i think i got it and anyway um just i got some pictures all include in here of those um, frame mounts just so you can see those but yeah and then I'll quick give you a little tutorial on how I get the fuel tank ready and the fuel lines ready for converting it to diesel so to start with getting the fuel system ready um, the first thing is I don't touch the tank really um, I don't drop it and I don't mess with the pump but the only thing I do tank related is if we go back here I take and it just depends on the the fill neck but I'll take and punch it out just so that I can fit a bigger size nozzle in if you end up needing to get fuel at a place that doesn't have a pump like that but the next step is going to be to find the fuel filter. So, unfortunately, I didn't do that when it was on the lift. So, I'll just show it to you here. So, you got to locate the gasoline filter here. You can see it in line. They vary on where they are on the vehicle. This one is right next to the transfer case here on the Chevy. And what I do is just cut the lines on either side. And then splice in just a piece of rubber hose on either side and just make it a direct flow because the diesel filter will do its job up in the engine bay so you don't need this one at all so I'll get a picture of that once I'm done but yeah you just want to get rid of that and make it a straight through and then in the engine bay here the Chevy's really easy it's got two two hoses here um, ascend and return from the pump and you can see the the send is obviously bigger it's at least five sixteenths I think with like a quarter return um, the Jeep and the Toyota I just had to find like an evap line that I used as the return on those but to get all the fuel out of the tank hopefully you were able to drive it long enough to empty most of it but you can actually run a couple of gallons of gas in your diesel pretty much no problem with a full tank but just to be safe if you want to pump it out what I do is I'll get both lines in there just in case depending on how easy it is to tell it's pretty pretty sure this is where the fuel is going to come out at but I hooked them up both anyway and then um, you got to find your fuel pump relay, which is on the Chevy. It's right here. So you got this plug here. 
and you can either get a wiring diagram or test it but this gray wire here is what's going to feed power to it so get a jumper from the battery and run it right to that gray wire and you should be able to hear that's the pump running and then just let her run and like I say hopefully you don't have too much fuel in there but you can always swap out buckets or whatever you want to do with it if it's clean fuel you can put it right in a gas can and use it again so anyway once that's done you're emptied the tank out you can fill it up with diesel and go ahead and hook up your diesel filter on the side here and up to the engine and you'll be ready to go so that's the extent of the fuel system i'll get some more pics of that as i get it installed but just kind of nice to do it with the engine out so yeah we're about to the last steps before we drop it in for good and I get a lot of questions on your EGT gauge placement. Um, this one I just went ahead and put in right here. Mostly it was convenient. And I didn't feel like taking the turbo back off if you have it in the vehicle. This works pretty nice because you can see with the EGR port off. You can actually put a magnet in there and collect all the shavings as the drill bit and the tap go through. So that works pretty nice. You can also see how far in there the center of this exhaust port is. And that's why a lot of times putting your gauge in this EGR port doesn't work because it's probably almost two inches back in there to really get in the center of the flow where the hottest point is going to be. So like I say, this worked best for this instance, but basically anywhere across here towards the center where they all come together and even down into this area here is going to give you the hottest readings. And that's definitely what you want because you don't want to be thinking you're getting good readings and you're really way hotter than that. So anyway, that is where I put that so I think we got everything else squared away and we are ready to put it back in the truck. 